Pesach. It's at a Pesach. The first thing I want to say about Pesach is there is an old tradition which is slowly being lost in our culture. An old Jewish tradition which is slowly being lost in our culture. The psychologist and the psychiatrist think it's healthy. But uh, for the neshama, this is a new, a new disease, a new American disease. What tradition are we losing? The tradition of being afraid of chametz. I don't know about your mother, but I know about my mother. <laughs> Go back enough generations, from Hanukkah, they're getting ready for Pesach. And they quote, clean a room, and then that room is not allowed to smell chametz. Chametz is not allowed to go with Dalaramas to the door. And the room has been Pesach, that don't you dare bring something into your room, right? And they're crazy about Pesach. And the cleaning for Pesach goes on for weeks and months, and there's so much nerves, so much intensity. Yeah, then comes closer to Pesach. They start cooking for Pesach. We can't eat this, and we can't eat this, and how come we don't use this? Now? Do we eat milk? Do we not eat milk? Do we use oil? Do we not use oil? I don't understand. If we can use sugar, why can't we use oil? Or if we use oil, why can't we use sugar? Right? What's, how does that sentence finish? Anybody know what it finishes? Blah, 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 blah. Right? <laughs> Now, so what's happening now? We're getting smart. We're getting really, we're getting mature. We're not going to be superstitious. You know the old cliche, dirt is not chomets and your wife is not a carbon basic. I'm sure you've heard that one, right? Dirt is not chomets, your wife is not a carbon basic. I walk by my house, so the guys are already joking around. I see a guy sitting outside smoking a cigarette. He says, listen, I'm helping my wife clean for Pesach. <laughs> you know how that joke goes, right? The guy's in the kitchen and he's bothering his wife. She's trying to clean Pesach and he's disturbing him. He says, you know, let your wife clean. He says, listen, she told me to get out of the house so I can clean for Pesach. So I went to the coil, I sat in the coil for an hour and I learned, now I'm home. She said, but your wife is still cleaning. but how much can I help? <laughs> how much can I help? That was a funny joke, okay? You didn't get it, you'll think about it, you'll get it. Um, it's a very bad man joke. But it, we're becoming very, very cool about Pesach. We don't worry about Chomet so much. We don't worry about Achshedim so much. Today, there's a very, very significant segment, even of people who consider themselves very from, who eat other people's food on Pesach. They go to these hotels, they go to these programs. These things were so trafe when I was growing up, you have no idea. The most fraya yidn went to these programs. You didn't eat your neighbor's food, Pesach. People on Pesach were nuts. A certified crazy, no quest, no denying it. 100% mishugah. And everyone had their own mishugas. I mean, there's people in this world, maybe you know such people, if a dish falls on the floor, you put it away till next Pesach. The man in let me wash it. No, next Pesach. There's people who don't use soap on Pesach. They wash the dishes with cold water and elbow grease. That means rubbing. When it comes to Pesach, people have mishugas. But you need to know that these mishugasin are holy. They are. What's my proof? My proof is Rosh Hashanah by Tchias. Rosh Hashanah by Tchias. We say a Yehi Ratzin. You know how Tchias works? You say Lam Matzeach seven times and you read eight Psukim that starts with Min HaMeitzar. Then you say a small Yehi Ratzin which is very Kabbalistic. Kel, no, Metzapa, Yeshua, I don't know what. Then you make the brachas, then you blow shoifer, and then you read a second Yehirat. The second Yehirat is a little tefillah, it's a prayer to the Abishtah. Rebbein Hashem, do me a favor, help me that the coilers of shoifer that I just blew should go before the kisi I covered and give me a good year. You know what, I, I, I think you can use a, uh, uh, a social test. The less people are afraid of Pesach, the more they're afraid of Rosh Hashanah. You know, mm-hmm. oh no, Hashanah's going to punish me because I didn't do anything. If you'd work. so so the Baditch of Enough said, the Halakha Baditch of said, the Belevi Yitz of Baditch of said that the Rosh Hashanah, when we blow Shafir, and then we're all very religious. Rosh Hashanah were very religious. Pesach don't bother me, but Rosh Hashanah were very concerned. Why? Hashanah's going to give me a bad year. He's going to zap me, and we're worried about that. We say that all of the sounds that came out of it, we say, Min kashak, u min kashak, min tashak, u min kashak, u min kashrak. Kuf, shin, reish, kuf. What is kuf, shin, reish, kuf? Kratzen, shayerin, raibin, kashrin. 
It's the scratching that we do, and the sweeping that we do, and the rubbing that we do, and the kash we do before Pesach. Rosh Hashanah before the key is, we reference to getting on their hands and knees and making the, the wife into a carbon Pesach and shmutz into chametz. In other words, first of all, I'm not telling you what to do. Second of all, you're not going to listen to me anyway. Third of the world, you're still single, you have no control over your lives. The, the tendency to go away from our mothers and our grandmothers and say they were crazy and they were neurotic and they were psychotic and they were cracked up and they were making with the people cleaning for Pesach is getting rid of dust and you can't eat this and you can't eat this you should just know that this is sacred it's holy it's posh it's holy it's very sad that we're becoming open-minded about a lot of things and this is one of them this open-mindedness this enlightenment this I'm too smart to waste my time getting rid of dust just cover it up. The tradition of your babas, and maybe your mamas, I don't know how old your parents are, so that depends. Of being cuckoo about Pesach. It is cuckoo. And it doesn't make sense. But it's holy. It's holy. You guys have to understand. You know the story? The Chafetz Chaim wrote a Shulchan Aruch. You know that? The Chafetz Chaim wrote a Shulchan Aruch. It's called the Mishnah Beruda. Mestam would take a Kontlen. And he was probably a learned man. Don't you think? And the Chafetz Chaim wrote a Seif Mishnah Beruda. Halach of Eres Chaim. See, he lived a very, very long life. He lived for sure into his 90s. People say he made it, but no one knows how long he lived. He was very, very old when he passed away. He was married more than once. So he, in his second marriage, he said to his wife, she was on the floor, hands and knees, cleaning for Pesach. And he walks in and he sees what she's doing and he tells her, you know, you don't got to do that. <laughs> That's not chomet. You don't got to do that. And she says, you go back to the base of Medish and you learn your gemara and leave me alone to my kitchen. So he says to her, I know the halacha. You're not, you don't have to do this. She says, you go back to the base of Medish and you learn your gemara and leave the kashin pesa for me. So he says to her, I wrote the book. I know the rules. So she said to him in Yiddish, if I'm going to follow you and your Shulchan Aruch, we'd end up at Chometz on Pesach. That's the story. A simple woman told the Chofetz Chaim, you with your Shulchan Aruch, this is how Yiddish women prepared for Pesach. Pesach was a time that Yidden were crazy. But it's even brought in Svarim, the whole of the Mashu. What is Oseb and Mashu? Everything is a Shi'ad. Chometz, I'm going to Mashu. A mashu chametz. Why do we boil our sugar, right? Why do we not bring any processed foods into the house? And then, of course, you say, what about the wine? Yeah? What about the... <laughs> everybody got their own exceptions here. Yeah? What about? What about? Don't be a hypocrite. We're all hypocrites. Mashu chametz on Pesach has no equal. Nothing is also be mashu. Everything has a sheer. Why are we makbid and chametz be mashu? So the, one of the ways they put it is because it's the first mitzvah we were given. And another way you put it is because the word amuna. Chevre, when we become very logical about Yiddishkeit, we don't understand what we lost. Because what we lost was never logical. We lost our soul. Our soul is a holiness. That holiness has mishagasen. The holiness is real. The holiness is a connection to Hashem. The holiness is emunah. The holiness is yiras shamayim. The holiness is old-fashioned frum. The holiness is old-fashioned afraid of avera. The way it comes out into the world is in these mishagasim. But when we get smart, and we say we don't need to do these mishagasim, my baba did it because she was cuckoo, but I'm not afraid of chometz, so I can clean in one week, and you could clean in one week. <laughs> it always happened in my house. A month before Pesach, my mother walked out of the kitchen, you had to wash your hands and scrub down the chamanul tzad. Maybe Chomet saw your shirt and the part of your shirt which saw the Chomet is going to see the closet and the whole closet will be clean and have a Pesach. I mean, I, it's pretty cuckoo. But you know what? That's my chinuch. That's how I grew up. And it made me who I am in a very, very real way. It's very, very unfortunate that we're becoming intelligent about this. There's an element of Yiddishkeit which is above Seichel. And one of the symptoms of the element of Yiddishkeit Seichel is how Yidin make Pesach. It's not just Mesidus Nevesh when a guy wants to kiss the cross, Rahman al Yidin's making Pesach was an expression of that element, and we become very smart. We're very smart. I mean, the ultimate smart is you close your house and you move to a different house and you have to clean that house of Pesach. I don't get that at all. And then there's people who go to eat other people's food which blows my mind. It's unheard of to eat. You don't eat food by your sister and brother. You go to a hotel, 
Now, it's, it's wonderful for the wife. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Everyone has a great time. But the neshama that you lose, you don't even know you're losing because you don't even know you have it. Because it's, 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 it's ephemeral. It's ruchnius. It's ruchnius. Pesach has an element of craziness. It always had. And that element of craziness fed not our crazy, it fed our supernormal, our neshama, our ruch yerushamayim. And as we become richer, that's really the truth, as Jews in America become richer, and we can all afford, or many of us, or some of us can afford these programs, and we don't want to work so hard, and we want to have a great time, and now you have to be beautiful, we are enjoying our Yom Tov more, no question about it. But we're taking away something we want our kids to have, that we have from our parents, that we don't even realize that we're not giving it to our kids. The paranoia, the Mishagasn of Pesach is chinuch. The Mishagasn of Pesach is the preservation of a certain holiness, a certain faith, which is not, lo of course it's not logical, everybody knows it's foolish. But it's a part of what Jews did. And when Rosh Hashanah comes, and we need the Abish Deschosim, and now we're worried, the Badich of Iraf says, you clean for Pesach, bring it up now. Well, I went to a program so write it into the Nusach, you know, and make the Nusach, Rosh Hashanah. You should accept my tkiyas. And the program I went to in the Bahamas, they said it was glad kosher. They said it was Labavit Shechite. I'm pointing this out because nobody else will. I'm pointing this out because I know this is evocative. This is, some of you agree with me, some of things I'm crazy. Some people say, why is he insulting me, right? Um, I don't know you, so I can't be insulting you. I can't be coming you. You need to hear this. This, when you get married, think about this. This is Jewish tradition. And yes, it doesn't make sense. But it's Jewish tradition. And min Yisrael Tehidi. So much of our Amunah and our is wrapped up in this kukunis before Pesach. I, I just want you to know it. That's my first punch in the nose, okay? I got a second one. Now this is really more for the boys than for the girls, but you need to hear this. Okay, now I'm going the 180 degrees opposite. Can I ask a question? Sure. So our mindset is supposed to be this is crazy, or not this is crazy, but it's like, because like you said, a lot of things are not logical, and it makes sense. Your mindset is to be, I'm afraid of chametz. Your mindset is to be, I don't want a mashu who chametz. Now when somebody tells you it doesn't make sense, you tell them, no, I'm afraid of chametz. I'm afraid of chametz. I don't want to bring food into my house on Pesach that I didn't prepare myself, because who knows where it was. And Chomet is also b'mashahu, not b'kazayis, not b'kabeya, b'mashahu. So you really mean it. If you don't mean it, then it's, it's you know, can you, can you act crazy? You act crazy, you don't become crazy, yeah. You really mean Pesach is a time that we go overboard in our Hidah Mitzvah. So, how, so you're saying this is a good for kids? I'm saying this is how Jewish people lived. And the children learned. The parents weren't doing it for the kids. They weren't showing off. They didn't stop when the kids grew up. This was their life. This was their life. They were afraid of chametz. They were so concerned with what you didn't put in their mouth. But Pesach especially. And the kids got a chinuch. You see the difference between what I'm saying and you're saying? The difference what I'm saying you're saying is you're saying let's do the act. And I'm saying you got to mean it. You have to mean it. Daf moirab v'chometz. Daf moirab v'chometz. Daf anir zeh namash v'chometz. Be'emes. And then along comes the scientist and says, you know, you don't make any sense because you use oil, but you don't, you have to you boil your sugar. Or you don't use any f uh, that, um, processed foods, but you bring wine into the house that you didn't make, or you use milk. So then the teller says, you're right, it doesn't make sense, but this is what we do. This is my father, this is what I do. But it's not an act. It's not an act. Pesach, we're crazy. Crazy about chomet and crazy about matzah. I'm about to go now the opposite extreme. Anybody want to speak on the first subject? I think you need to hear this. I, I don't think I'm changing anybody's mind. Those of you who are going to programs are still going to programs. Those of you who are staying home are still staying home. Those of you who have become mature and don't care about all these mishagas from the Baba are still going to be mature and not kill the Baba. But I, need, I think you need to hear it. This is number one. Are we done? Can we move on to the next thing? Go ahead. Uh, many times before Pesach, like, there's always Rebbeinim or people saying that, like, you shouldn't take on any more chametz than 
what your family already has. So, I have a problem with those Rabbonim. I understand them. I understand them. You know why you understand them? Because there were women who were falling apart. There are women who are falling apart who don't have smart enough husbands to say enough. There are people who are so sincere, but you have to understand, the people who feel the way I just described are not even listening to those Rabbanim. And the people listening to those Rabbanim were doing it before the Rabbanim said it. You know, there's two things in Yiddishkeit. There's halacha and there's chassidus. There's a rov and there's a mashpia. They play different roles. A rov has to say that. I have to say this. Now what's the truth? The Rav has to say that because he knows the woman who had a nervous breakdown from Pesach. Or Chas Hashem lost her pregnancy. God forbid, it's happened. And when the husband said to the wife, you're not allowed to do this, get into bed, this year will be less from, the wife said we're going to have Chometz Pesach. He said, let's call the Rav. And the Rav said, your husband is right. And the wife said, I don't trust you. So the Rav has to say that. But what I said has to be said also. And the truth, at least, is in the Kavona, and where our head is. Am I answering you? This is a very interesting, very important point. No, so I'm saying, let's say, I mean, as well as we're all going to be men. Guys. <laughs> no, and we're going to be taking on their conversation. No, you know? no, they're going to take on yours. Trust me, I got married. I also thought that. But go ahead. I'm saying, should we, like, like, usually, the way Why the not? Way it's been presented is, like, Whatever your family does, like this is what you should do, and you shouldn't start like being even more like. I mean, everyone has their own mishegasin. Yeah. So, like, is cleaning for Pesach minhagim? Is not eating processed foods for Pesach minhagim? Or it's a fear of chametz? I'm asking you. I'm saying it became minhagim. If it becomes a minig, it's dead. If it, this is what we do, but I don't care about it. There's a passion in it. If there's a passion in it and you're able to take another Chumah, why not? You have to understand, you know why I'm talking this way? Because nobody does. I'm the crazy guy. Everybody else is worried about people's uh, wrinkles. The truth has to be said. The Jewish people survive on a Muna, not on Seichel. And the Muna is nourished by the crazy, not by the normal. And in America, besides all the other Nisyanists, we're becoming smart. So I'm saying you got to stay crazy. But you can't do crazy, you got to be crazy. If, if that's what it is, this is what my parents did. Your parents didn't do this. They agonized over it. They anguished over it. They were afraid of the boogeyman called a piece of bread in the corner. You have to inherit that. You have to inherit that. And then you'll want to take out another chumrah. Then the Rav says to you, you're not allowed. I ask you to take this Chumrah because your health is going to be affected. And You see, there's an interface here. There's two worlds coming together. And in our practical lives, there's room for both of them. Hey, go ahead. How does one get that fear from So you have to get it from your parents. <laughs> and if you didn't, then you have to go to Balchubi Yeshiva for three months. You have to be among sincere people. I think you have it. I, 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 we all have it to a degree. What I think we need to appreciate is when all the people make fun of it, we have to remember that there's something wrong with that. Even though it's logical, there's something wrong with it. There's something very deeply. When you come Rosh Hashanah to the Abish that you say Kashrak, and you get to Kashrin and Kratzin and Raibin and Shairin and Kashrin, and you cross out the word and you write Pesach program in the Bahamas, I don't know. I don't know. Really? Hashem, give me a good year because I went to the Bahamas of Pesach. I spent a lot of money on the Pesach program. We had a great time in the Bronx Zoo. So I'm trying to bring to you an idea which is being lost. I think we all have it. Sincerity we all have. People try to take it away from us. We don't have to let them. Maybe I'm not answering you completely. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now you, you have to reinvent the fear, <laughs> reinvent the crazy. I think it's very important what I'm saying. I think it's very important what I'm saying. Anybody else want to comment? Next point, okay? Now this is really something which you're not going to expect to hear this from me. What I said till now is crazy enough. This is even crazier, okay? Everybody ready? <laughs> 
Pesach is a time for, finish a sentence, family. Pesach is a time that you go home and you sit by your parents and say that. Pesach is a time for family. Lubavitch is the world of Mesidus Nefesh. There's no doubt about it. Lubavitch, if you're a Lubavitcher, even if you are not the, the farthest thing from a Shliach, if you're a Lubavitcher, you live a life of Mesidus Nefesh, you don't even realize it. And one of the most acute examples of the Mesidus Nefesh of Lubavitch is you don't go to your parents for Pesach because I'm on Shlichus. My parents are going to my sister who's on Shlichus. Or something of that ilk. And this is being lost. Pesach is a time for family. In a perfect world, every married woman with her husband and her kids move into their parents' home. When the parents got 12 kids, everyone gets a half a room. Have you ever seen other communities? Everybody goes to their mother for Pesach. And it's a, it's a woman's world. The Orthodox world is a woman's world. You don't go to your father, your husband's family. You go to your wife's family. That's how it is. Megeta Haim. Everybody goes home. Pesach is a time to sit with your family. Your father is 80 and you're a grandfather. So he's a great-grandfather or he's a great-great-grandfather because you're a great-grandfather. Megeta Haim. Pesach is a time for family. My father, Zazan Gesundestag, told me that when he was a Bacher, the Rebbe made a Seder upstairs, which was public. You were able to go in. And the Rebbe made the Bacher, who lived out of town, go home. He didn't let him stay in 770, it could be his Seder. But Avgena Haim. This is lost on Lubavitch in a significant way. And frankly, I'm not sure which is worse. The losing the fear of Chometz or forgetting the tradition of Jewish people. Jewish people are family oriented. Family oriented means brothers and sisters are close. They go to their parents. This is old fashioned. It's not modern. Why is it not modern? Because my parents are old and yukulish. And my parents are over the hill. They're not fun. There's not enough room in the house. The excuses are endless. Megita Haim, Tatata Mame, Pesach, you go home to your father and your mother, you sit by their Seder table. This is what Jews have done forever. Why? Because this is how we make Jews. Kinderlach, this is, you make Yidin by keeping your children close. The experience of a grandson or a granddaughter sitting by the Seder table of his Zayd and his Bob and saying, Tata, ich will ba de frege man ishtana. Almost guarantees that in a hundred years from today, that baby is going to be an old lady and sit with her children and her great grandchildren at the same Seder, and the kinder are going to say, Tate, ich will ba de frege man ishtana, in the same Yiddish. So this becomes tricky. It becomes tricky. The Rebbe wants Shluchim and even Rabbonim to make public seders. The Rebbe wants it. A Yid told me he's a Rav, he's not even a Shliach. And he makes a public seders community because the Rebbe, the Rebbe was very, very into the public seders. Public seders is one of the most costly parts of Shlichus when it comes to Chinuch. Maybe the most. You have to raise your kids. You have to raise your kids. How do I raise my kids in public seder? So every shliach has a different trick. I know people who make the public seder and they go home at 12 o'clock at night and they make Kiddush, Kaddish. And the seder goes to whatever time in the morning. Now depending on what kind of shliach you are, some shluchim don't have a minion the next morning so they can dive whenever they wake up. But some shluchim gotta get up, you know. But there are shluchim who literally finish the public seder and come home and make a seder. It's, it's chinuch, chinuch, chinuch. It is so important for the future. You know what Pesach Seder means to a child. It's everything. You remember being a child. It's everything. It's everything. And like I said, in a perfect world, it's not just you sitting by your parents' Seder when you're single. When you're married, you bring your husband. And when you have children, you bring your children with you. And you sit by Tat and Maman. Now, in Lubavitch, this is hard. It's really... If you want a proof that the whole Lubavitch is being Mesa Nefesh, not just the half of Lubavitch, which is on Shlichus, this is the proof. So many of us do not get to sit by a parent and say that. But we have to want to. And I sense 
a sentiment of exodus. Oh, this year, thank God, I don't got to go home this year. My parents are nuts. <laughs> this year, I'm getting out of it. We're, I'm going to a shliach. I'm going to work in a hotel as a waitress and make some money. I'm going to Bachem or going in pairs to the Far East, to Asia. I want you to know, I don't like it. The Bacham come to me and say, Rabbi, I need my Mashpia's permission to go away from home. I say, I want you to know, I, I think you should not do this. I think you should go home and sit at your Pesach, parent Pesach. Now, I want you to know, some Bacharim understand what I'm saying. Some Bacharim really want to go home and they want to go on Merkish Lichas for Mesiris Nefesh. But most are happy not to be at the Seder. Why? The Seder is boring. It takes so long. And nobody is so, you fall asleep. There's something messed up about that. Deeply messed up. And it goes to the core of what a Jew is. It goes to the <coughs> core of what a Chassid is. Pesach daf mengei nahim. You know, <laughs> boys and girls are dating, right? What's a father and a mother for? A check and a muzzle. Pay the bulls and keep your mouth shut. That's the program today. Excuse me, I raised you and I'm paying for this. I'm taking you to Chopa. I have a say in who you marry, what life you're going to live. We're becoming less and less like that. That's bad. That's not good. You want your parents involved in your shidduch. Yeah, but they don't understand. They don't know. First of all, you have to be honest with your parents. And a lot of times your parents don't know because you're not honest. And even when you're honest, it's hard for, you to be, for, for them to accept what you're saying because they want for you what they think is best and you have a different idea. But parents need to be involved with us. Pesach is one of those moments. Megeta Haim. Megeta Haim. If you have to have Mesidus Nefesh, you have Mesidus Nefesh. But it's Mesidus Nefesh. When the boys and the girls, and even the young couples, are happy not to go to their parents' Seder because the Seder goes on too long and it's boring, that's a disease. It's a disease that touches a Muna. Because Pesach is all about a Muna. Now, I'm not telling you what to do, not that you're going to listen anyway. I want you to know my own kids, when they ask me, they go away, I tell them, you know what I think, and I let them go. I'm not going to stop them. But I think, I believe, that if Merkis wants to send people on shlichas to these places, let them send koil couples. There's so many couples that can hide, so don't have shlichas. let them send couples. Why Bachrim? And why Bachrim of 18? 18 year old Bachrim have to sit by their father's sage and say Manishtana. 18-year-old boys, 8-year-old girls, forgive me for saying it, are little kids. They're little kids. They need to sit by the guy is 24, 26 male. But they have to be by the Seder. They have to be bored to death by the Pesach Seder because this is part of what makes them Jewish. And it's important to Lubavitch. Lubavitch and Hasidim didn't go away from tradition. They're mice and nefesh. But we have the same values. And I want you to know that Pesach gate menahim. Pesach, you sit by your father's Seder as much as you don't like it. You know what? You should like it. Make yourself like it. Because as bad, <laughs> you're going to be your father in 30 years. And your kids are going to feel about the way you feel about them. The way it's supposed to be, there's a certain kind of a respect, there's an understanding. My parents are older, they're wiser. They're not as cool as I am, not as quick as I am, not as moderate as I am, but they're Yiddish. And that's what the Seder is. It's a Yiddish event. We become Yiddish from these Seder the last five hours that should take 20 minutes. That makes us Again, it's not logical, but it's true. It's Jewish tradition. Pesach, get me name. Pesach, you go home and you sit by your father's seder. Now I want you to understand. I, Lubavitch is my serious nefesh. And I, anybody who is a shliach knows this firsthand. One of the most difficult moments on shlichus is the fact that you can't make a seder for your own kids because you're making a seder for the community. So like, some shluchim do one night. And there's a way, that a lot of, I mean, every shlich figures it out. But it's chinuch. Girls, chinuch doesn't end when you're nine. Chinuch ends when you're 90. Chinuch never finishes. We're never so grown up that we no longer need our parents. Big mistake, big mistake, big mistake. It's untraditional, which is the most important thing, and it's also wrong. It's gonna take you half your life, which means till you're 50, to appreciate your parents. You know how I know this? 
Because that's how long it took me. It's going to take you so many years for you to say, you know, that was good. Do it. Even though right now you don't think that. Pesach dach mangenahim. You can't always. There's all kinds of reasons why you can't. But you need to know how it's supposed to be. And you need to try as much as possible to create that. Pesach is a time for family. It's Kedusha. It's not just custom. It's Kedusha. It's a heilige minik. Pesach, gate nehem tzatat mame. Pesach, you come to your parents. And you sit at their seid. If you could. Not everybody can. And if your parents can have the space, you bring your children. At least in your head, you have to know what Pesach is. When you make a Pesach Seder, you're making it for your children. Now, I'm not a shliach, I'm a malamed, I'm a teacher, right? But we always have guests. I mean, for many years, I want you to know this. For probably more than 20 years, I, I, it was one of my mishigasen. The first Seder in my house was no guests. We always have a lot of guests. With no guests, it was us. And I mean, my younger children, unfortunately, don't have that experience because by the time they were big enough to remember, that policy was broken because of necessity, but we, that was a rule we made. I, I was able to do it. The first said it was just a family. The second said all kinds of guests, all kinds of guests. But even when we had guests, the said was for the kids. The guests participate, they don't take over. Now when you're on shlichas, you can't do that. But even on shlichas, you know, the, there's a way of making the seder on shlichas where the most important contributors to the seder are the children who had that seder, which is probably the way you should do it. Because the whole idea of the Pesach seder is vigala to levincha, you talk to the kids. But these are messages, these are lessons that are so elementary, they're so basic, that they don't even talk about it in bias Yehudi, you know what I'm saying? It's important for you to know that this is the tradition of the Jewish people. And we are traditional Jews who are fighting a war to bring Mashiach. It's true. There's a lot of Mesidus Nefesh, but we didn't throw our souls away. We're sacrificing our souls. We need to know what our values are. Pesach daf heim. Okay, questions or comments? Did the rabbi not start the Nefesh started after Gimel Tam, as far as I'm concerned? In these numbers? At this age? Of course not. You know how much Lubavitch has grown? It, these are all blessings. There's almost not a place in the world where Lubavitch doesn't make a seder today. If there's Jews, there's going to be a Lubavitch seder. And frankly, in many of those places, there's Pashat Shluchim. But you go to Russia, in every shtetl they send Bacharim to go to these places to make a seder. Some places are very small, they're not big stardom, they're a few people. But there needs to be a minimum age, and it shouldn't be 19. I, 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 it bothers me. I, I tell the Bacharim all the time, I'll be the applicators. You belong at, I'm not going <laughs> to stop you from going. It's, it's, I pray that it's, I ask the Bacharim, is it Mesiris Nefesh, or are you happy not to be home? So some Bacham tell me straight it's Mesidus Nefesh. Some Bacham tell me straight I can't stand my house. And some Bacham, ooh and ah. You know, uh, like it's, yeah, I, want, it, it's, I know what I'm supposed to say, but I don't really mean it, so I'm going to say it, but I don't mean it. It doesn't come across right, so. Uh. And you know what the second tragedy is? These Bacham go away to these places. They take a pot, and they're supposed to eat eggs and potatoes and matzah. Because the food that they're serving those people, they wouldn't eat their own home. A whole year they wouldn't eat that food. It's kosher. Kosher, but it's a different standard, yeah? You know how many of the Bacham eating that food? The eggs, and the, the eggs and the potatoes go stale after the first day or after the second day. In other words, they, they're kids, they're young. And they, they, they do want to have fun. They're going on shlichas. But they're not tzaddikim. The foundation, the home is our foundation. You need to be home. You need to be home. The home is going to give you your foundation. Ed. Um, is going to the river like wrong for the Tigers in general, or like, like the whole, like Tishrei especially, but like, like the Kfutza doesn't let the Bacham go for Pesach. Pesach. The Kfutza doesn't let the Bacham go for Pesach? The Kfutza does not let them go for Pesach? I don't know, I never checked, but like I heard like a lot of stories, like people from saying they didn't wear a lot. The Kfutza doesn't want to go on for Pesach. So it's a serious Nefesh? It's being by the Rebbe. Being by the Rebbe. Being by the Rebbe is a special thing. 
Yeah, it is a Mesidus Nefesh. It is a Mesidus Nefesh. It's a different kind of Mesidus Nefesh, because Mesidus Nefesh of Shlich is for somebody else. Mesidus Nefesh, being by the Rebbe, is my Ruchni is over, my Gashmi is so to speak. But yeah, it is Mesidus Nefesh. Yeah, I feel like this message needs to be said. That's why I'm saying it. You belong at home. Then sometimes you can't be home. But in your head, you have to want to be home. And if you don't want to be home, there's something deeply wrong. Does anybody know? Here's a uh, trivia question. What is the very first Mivtza of the Rebbe? The very first Mivtza of the Rebbe. The first. It's not Tefillin. The first Mivtza of the Rebbe is Lulav. That's not Yem Yem. The first time that Rebbe said go out into the street and do a mitzvah with Yidin was Tov Shin Yud 1953. That's 70 years ago, 71 years ago. The Rebbe said go out into the street and stand by the train station and shake a little bit of people. Does anybody know what's the second mifza of the Rebbe? And it's not, it's not film. The second mifza is Shmuda Matzah. Matzah, Shmuda. Now let's talk about Shmuda Matzah for a minute. Talk about Mishagasen. Huh? Who is likely to make a more kosher le Pesach matzah? Old Russian ladies talking while they need, or a machine? <laughs> From a perspective of halacha, you cannot find a more kosher matzah than a mashanova matzah. The machine needs the dough perfectly. There's never any flour doesn't get kneaded, as opposed to that guy who's sitting there using his fingers and kneading the dough. As strong as he is, you know, after a while you get tired. Yeah? And then when a, when a machine lays out the dough, it's flat. It's not got bubbles in it. It's flat. And when a machine makes holes, and when a machine puts it into the oven and counts exactly 15 seconds, pulls out time, they're not burnt, they're not underbaked, not overbaked, they're perfectly baked, there's no dough in it. From a perspective of halacha, the idea of handmade shmura matzah makes as much sense as, <laughs> as a wife being a carbon pesach and dirt being chomets. Makes no sense at all. And we're moisten nefesh for shmura matzah, handmade shmura matzah. Round ones and not square ones. The Rebbe always spoke about that. Round ones and not square ones. I don't know, first of all, I don't know why the machines can't make round ones. They can make round ones too, but they make them square. Um, and what is the Indian of round? The Rebbe didn't explain why round is an Indian. But we're moisten nefesh for handmade round shmura matzah. In Shmura Matzah, the lady could have spit into the dough as she's talking. And she would have bread in there from breakfast. And she could have not kneaded it properly, so just push it flour in there. Do uh, you, you guys know this? What is the most dangerous thing on the entire Pesach? Matzah. Because matzah is flour. A little water in the matzah, chometz. That's why you don't eat gebroks. We're not so about gebroks. Nocha mishagaz, shruya. And the Rabbeim were moist and nefesh for handmade shmura matzah. You know, there's very from Yidin, Litvish Yidin, who dafka use machine matzah. Because on every level of logic, a machine matzah is more kosher le pesa than handmade shmura matzah. So what's this? Then you really answer to that question? Huh? Chadisht. Oh, so the only halachic, the only hair that we hang on from the perspective of halacha is the mitzvah to make the shame mitzvah. The shame matzah mitzvah. Machines cannot say the shame matzah mitzvah. Okay, so you can say the shame matzah mitzvah and push the button to let the flour go into the oil, water. You can say the shame matzah push the button to make the, the, the machine knead the dough. The shame matzah mitzvah so the dough can be rolled out. The shame matzah make the hole. The shame matzah goes into the But the person doing it is not the person saying it, because the machine is doing it. The only explanation that makes any sense to a halacha person for why we dafki use handmade shmur and matzah is the, is the lishma. And it's a good point, it's a good point. That's why a lot of yidin who are very halachically oriented use today still handmade shmur and matzah, even though it costs literally 20 times as much, maybe more, I mean, how much does a machine make? How much does a pound of machine-made kosher le pesach matzah from the best strikes cost? How much does it cost? Seven dollars a pound? How much is a? It's not twenty times, yeah. How much? I think it's even less. A pound of matzah in the matzah bakery today costs thirty dollars, thirty-five dollars. 
It's five bucks a matzah, people. <laughs> a piece falls on the floor, it's a dollar fifty. It's a train fare. <laughs> it's so expensive. It's not more, it's obscenely expensive. It's unbelievably expensive. And a lot of Yidin who, who are more into halacha than into chsidis use this for this reason. The lishma is a good reason. Now, then you can start to clad and say you only lishma by the kaida. So have handmade shmuda matzah for the kaida. And the rest of Pesach, as long as it's not Chomets, it's okay. Read machine matzah, save money, there'll be more kosher, Dalagut Yeah, Why? What's the Mishagas? The answer is the whole Pesach is a Mishagas. And the Rebbe said to people, when the Rebbe made Mifza matzah, who was he talking to? Do you know? How do you know this? You were in my class last year. Huh? Oh, good. The. the uh, you would have made me feel like a million dollars if you were in my class last year, but I'm very impressed that you know it. The mitzvah was made for Rabbonim. The Rebbe said, a rav was a show. The Rebbe said, in the old country, every rav gave his balabat mishmur matzah. Meaning, in the shtetale, a lot of yidin did not eat shmur matzah. They ate kosher matzah, it was not chomitz, chas v'sholem. It was not shmurah. There's different degrees in shmurah. Shmurah mishas ksira, shmurah mishas tchina. There's different degrees in shmurah. And a lot of yidin ate regular matzah. So the rav would give you shmurah matzah mishas ksira for the seder. It's one of the things that Abadim did. They gave all their balabatim. So the Rebbe made a mifza in America that if you're uh, someone who listens to the Rebbe, who has derechers for the Rebbe, and you're a rav of a shul, and you have a kill of yidin who are from, or fromish, and they're going to make a seder, give them shmurah matzah. It became that you go on Miftzayim in the street and you hand people Shmura Matzah, which is very expensive. To give a stranger three Shmura Matzahs is give him $20. He doesn't even know what you gave him. He has no clue what you gave him. He doesn't understand how much money it cost. He doesn't have the clearest idea. It doesn't make sense to him. But there's a, there's a fanaticism about Shmura Matzah. Why? For the same reason that the fanaticism about Pesach Bechlau. Matzah is a muna. Matzah is a muna. And matzah is bittel, right? Anova. Matzah is bittel. Matzah is Kabbalah sale. And you want it to be hard. Just like you have the sweat of cleaning for Pesach. And that sweat for cleaning for Pesach is a part of Pesach. It's a part of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. It's a part of the Yamuna. It's a part of the bittel. The same is true with the matzah. A human being makes that matzah with his or her hands and works hard. And says, the Sheri matzah mitzvah. The sanctity is not about the kashras. The sanctity is about the holiness. What the Rebbe used to say by the Fabrega Nation, that matzah is called mechla de mehemenusa, the bread of faith. So the Rebbe touched. It's not the pshat that matzah is a skula for a muna. Matzah is a muna. When you're eating matzah, you're eating a muna. When you eat matzah, you're eating amunah. When you eat matzah, you're eating faith. That's how you have to look at the kazayas. And how do you define amunah? A machine? So this is another mishagas that we have. Dafka using shmurah matzah, and the consistency is, beklal yidin. We're here not because we're smart. I mean, it helps that we're smart, yeah? But we're here because we have faith. We're here because we're crazy. We're here because Yidin in the olden days were afraid of Chomets like the boogeyman. We're here because in the olden days people took the Kazayis Matzah so seriously because they knew that this piece of bread gives me a moon and the This is a value. It's a, it's a Hashkofa thing. It's not a Seichel thing, it's a Muna thing, it's a Hashkofa thing. We're still all eating Shmuda Matzah that's made by hand, Mishaz Ketira, but the idea is consistent with the other two points that I made. Okay, good job, good job.